Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, in these ongoing meditation sessions, we mainly try to share some basic informations related to, to meditation and kind of like giving you a clear understanding how to build a very good a strong spiritual foundation for you. So when it comes to meditation, it's a mental practice. But mental practice itself, not going to just focus to mind and work with the mind, can bring result. So you have to apply it, connect it, harness with your day-to-day life and bodily action and verbal action also. So somehow, if we go to the very basic level of meditation, as you know, there are two kinds of meditation methods. One is tranquility meditation. Another way, having undisturbed mind and developing one-pointness or another way it called the Chitta Bhavana. So this Samatha Bhavana is very famous. And there are a lot of meditation techniques to develop this tranquility state. And there is another method we call the Vipassana meditation. So in that actually the Vipassana came out of the, the Buddha's teaching it called the Satipattana. There is a complete sutra called Satipattana Sutta. So in that sutta, Buddha explained about beyond the tranquility meditation, how you can deeply go into the, the depth and understand the reality and gain the liberation. So before the Buddha, this tranquility meditation used to be very famous. That is the only method that they had. And out of tranquility meditation, you, you are capable to develop your day-to-day -day activities. As an ordinary person, you can develop your lifestyle. And at the same time, you can gain high mental powers. And you, you can achieve too many jhana or the high mental powers. And even you can go beyond this human life and attain to higher existence, kind of like the 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 Brahmas or the Devas or the deities, so that kind of level. But why the, the Buddha explain about the Vipassana? Why it is very necessary to understand? And what is the actually exactly the, the difference in between the, the tranquility and Vipassana? Why that tranquility meditation did not help to attain to the liberation? So today, today, we are a little bit going to look in deeper and understand this method. So when it comes, this is not a, 
kind of like uh, someone create and give as a teaching. So this is the very method of the your, your mind. As example, your mind has a mechanism to attain to liberation. That is what you have to understand. So through meditation, you have to get access to that. Otherwise, rather than forgetting the mind and mental behavior, you can't you can't gain something to uh, gain something as outside knowledge and put it to you. You can't do that. So there is a method in you. If you find that method, you are capable to to attain to the liberation. There is a method in you, there is a mindset in you, there is a pattern in you. If you are if you are recognize that, if you develop that pattern, you are capable to gain the high mental powers. There is a method, there is a pattern in you, there is an energy in you. If you are capable to tap into it, you are capable to, to go beyond this human life. And at the same time, it is the positive side, the negative, negative side also the same. You can go into the lower existence. In this very moment inside you, there is a way that uh, sometimes in you, you never saw there is a nature in you, you can become a very serious killer. And at the same time, you can become a deity or the angel. This both nature in you. And at the same time, in, in you, there is a hell and there is a heaven. So which direction you want to go, which way you want to go and how you want to develop it. Understanding this is it's kind of like the very first thing you have to come. Get out of the self-centered, egocentric mind. And understanding there is a mechanism, there is a pattern, there is a cause and effect. There is a causation. And understanding that and developing the method is the way to get into deep a little bit. So the meditation is that method. You come to a point, settle down and start to give you a clear understanding and observation. So what is the very behavior of mind? When it comes to our day-to-day -day life, as you know, this whole science and technology, machines, gadgetics, this everything today, igniting our dopamine. So we are kind of like a very... Uh, the human body is itself like a drugs. You are chemical. Your head to toe toes, each and every cell atom is kind of like some kind of chemical and some kind of drugs. So it always kind of like a activate and deactivate. And so our very, very behavior look very carefully. Try to be with me. So if you start to develop some kind of this chemical reactions in you, what happened by the time it develop itself and it, it become very sustainable to maintain inside you. So the very dangerous and the one of the most powerful chemical that you have, nuclear that you have is your thoughts. Have you ever th the thought about it? It's the, your thoughts are the most dangerous nuclear and most powerful energy that you have. And your thoughts are the drugs that you have. It's, it's kind of same like, you know, that is why through this placebo effect, you activate your thoughts. So then what happens? This thought create release chemicals. When you have certain thoughts, your entire body release certain kind of chemicals, release certain kind of vibration, release certain kind of energy. When you change the thought pattern, you release that energy, change that energy. So what happens? In day-to-day -day life, as this ordinary people we are, 
we are always depending from past and the future. So when you think about past, see, it, it activates some kind of chemical in you. You, you feel good. Then it's it's a, our past, our life is it's a story. You know, people like to listen to stories. So our life itself is a story. Our past history is a story. And when you talk about your own past, you don't tell exactly the way whatever it happened. You make it nice, beautiful. You shape it with some kind of little, little things. You make it a good story. And when you make it like that way, your body release some kind of chemical, you feel good. So when you think about your past, when you talk about your past, your, your brain, your entire body start to energize in certain ways. It release some kind of chemical and you feel good in the moment. And the same thing, when you think about the future, dreaming, oh, I want to do this, that, this, 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 this. So you're dreaming, the same, this dopamine level start to activate and some kind of chemical start to react. And that the chemical reactions giving you feelings and then you feel good. So then remember, when you think about past, you feel good. When you think about future, you feel good. So you are addicted to that feelings, not to the past or the future. So because of that addiction that happened in you, you keep repeating about your past or the future. So that's why you look around, you, you know, whoever talk about their past, they always bring somehow you know whatever that uh, the situation come they go to birthday party they go to a wedding you know they uh, kind of like a social gathering so somewhere anything any situation come somehow this person start to bringing a story from the past related to that person even you go to a funeral they are this guy bringing some kind of a story related to his past. And the people who talk about the future dreaming the same. Whatever situation, somehow they're bringing a story related to the future. So that, that, it's, that is how our mind behaves. we all the same. Remember this. You all are the same. You all now have this. That's why we, we have this life like this. So then you, what you have to remember, you are not addicted to your past or you are not addicted to your future. You are addicted to the whatever the, the feelings you gain when you think about your past and the future. That's, that's why we keep repeating, repeating, repeating. So, why, why this feeling, that, that feeling itself called the lust or the, the desire or the greed? That greediness is the, the one who push you to again and oh, because you feel good. Oh, go, go, think, think and bring a story from past. Bring a story from past or oh, go to the future. Oh, think about something, think about something, dream, dream. So this, you are, the, this greediness addicted to that feelings push you to think about the past or the push you think about the future. So it, it, it's kind of like an example. It's this the thread, that the past is a thread and the, the future is a thread. So in the mid, middle, the weaver, Taylor, 
and tailoring and weaving the cloth using the past and the future. So the this weaver or the tailor is the tailor is the the desire or the greed. And he took something from past, something from future, and create the this garment of life. So that's why the meditation is a method rather than depending from the past or the depending from the future, you come to the present moment. It's a skill you have to develop. Otherwise, you always addicted to the past or the future. This chemical reaction happen in you. So then, then whoever go through that kind of situation, don't blame to that person. Oh, this person always bringing something from past or bringing something from future. No. Always drama, you know, reminding something. Don't blame to that person. You have to have more compassion because that person is kind of like a drug addicted, alcohol addicted person. It's kind of like an addict, you know, some kind of addiction that go went through the mind that person went through this repetition what the situation we the same sometimes and you know that that's why sometimes if once you start to practice meditation maybe if you 24 7 always if you start to talk about meditation meditate uh, the people get sick around you what is the hell this you know this person always talk about meditation 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 and because sometimes we feel good when we talk about meditation it's a, it's a kind, kind of like a disease. <laughs> you know, maybe we also have that disease. <laughs> you know, so we have to think about it. Huh? So that's why you have to be very careful. This is the very nature of mind. We are tapping into it. So that's why we recognize it. If we have it, you know, little by little, we can, we all can get out of it. <laughs> you know, so then, you have to remember what you like from where it comes. It's, it's a conventional nature. It's an ordinary life. That is the very nature of life. Nothing wrong with this anything. Only thing is you have to understand. So then, how you can first get out of this chemical reaction? How you can cure? What is the medicine? So the medicine is the present moment. So rather than thinking or dreaming and creating about your past or the creating about the future and becoming happy about it, now you come to the present moment. So to get into that, you need a mental object. Look, when you go to the past or the future, still you get a mental object. That mental object, listen this very carefully and try to get it. That even though you go to the past, or oh, even though you go to the future, your mental object depending always from the present moment. Otherwise, you can't just tell something about your past without the present moment of mental object. So just imagine, you know, just suddenly somebody come and tell, oh, once upon a time there was a king. People are, what is this? Why, why this line? No, it should relate it to the, the some kind of situation around us. So the thing is now the tranquil when you develop the tranquility meditation, you gain the present moment of object and you stay in the present moment rather than going to the past or the future. So for that, your body is one of the best tools. But the thing is, look, when you sit, when you lie down, when you walk, when you stand, or oh, whatever the bodily posture you hold, while you're holding that posture, you go to the past or the future. So what the very basic, simple technique what the Buddha taught? Bring the attention to your posture. Using that posture, on the top of that posture, don't 
go to past or the future. So when it comes to meditation technique, actually the very method of the meditation is not difficult. Remember that. It's, those are very simple, basic things. Like, uh, you know, just seeing the body yourself, bringing attention to your body. What, uh, what do you need? Any, any kind of rocket science for that? Observing breathing, inhalation. But look, very simple. Observe, bringing attention to your inhalation, actually, how simple it is. What, is there anything that you can simplify than that? Just seeing your body as it is. If you sit, just not about dreaming, creating, visualizing, or any kind of things. You know, just look, you bring the attention to you, you, that your body, because the body and the mind both together. What, what is the difficulty that you have? No. When you stand, when you lie down, just recognizing you are lying down, how easy it is. There is nothing to do. So that's why when it comes to med meditation methods or the techniques, those are very easy, very simple. No, in Buddhism, remember, Buddha is the one who most compassionate person or the, the spiritual teacher during that time. No, do you think and uh, do you think he he going to give you any kind of puzzle or any kind of very difficult, you know, hard to achieve task? No. Like look, you know, if you are a mother or the father, look how you you know deal with your children. Sometimes when sometimes when you cook and when you try to eat, feed them. How you feed? You don't give, you know, fish, you know, or the uh, um, the meat or anything that with a very hard way to, you know, eat. Like elders, maybe they eat. You know, they can eat. But for children, you don't give that way. You, you know, take out all the, you know, hard things and make it more soft and very easy. Just put it to the mouth, it go. So the Buddha the same. There is in, in Buddha's teaching, there is no any hard, difficult, you know, teachings. It's very simple. But when, when it comes through the guru, <laughs> the, you know, monk or the teacher, <laughs> then it becomes something else. That's the difference. So somehow, how you can gain that the present moment, you know, just observe the, observe your body. If you walk, you're walking. Keep the attention. Don't, don't think about past. Don't think about the future. Maybe in the beginning, it, it feels kind of like a no taste. Because when we think about past or think about the future, it's, it's, we feel good. So this, that's addiction. But now in the present moment, it's a kind of like, you know, eating broccoli. <laughs> you know, most of the people hate eating broccoli. But, you know, whoever want to, you know, reduce the weight, they all eat broccoli. <laughs> you know, so the present moment also like that. Present moment, it's like a hit, you know, because there is nothing, you know, you just observe the body, you just observe sitting, you just observe lying down, no dreaming about something or fantasy, nothing. It's just you lie down. You feel kind of like, you know, it's a, like eating raw vegetable, no taste. That That is what happened from the beginning. So you have to know that. Why? Because we are addicted to that taste. So it's like the sugar and salt, so like that. You have to remember, nothing wrong that you take the sugar. It's, it's so sweet. But by the time, you know, it can give you problems. It attacked your blood or the insulin, you know, insulin, then, you know, you, gave me, you may get diabetes. So like that, 
you have to remember one thing it's common sense you have to be wise smart to understand the very present moment of thrill or the fun can create a long term disaster if you catch that eating broccoli is okay for you <laughs> you become so happy about it you know so like that even though this present moment sometimes observing inhalation exhalation no dreaming no colors no pictures no fun but if you little by little little by settle down with it you start to recognize that is where you going to find your deeper connection not in the past or the future and whatever we create out of the past or the future even though in the moment we feel good but by the time it create disaster once you know that simple method you are more happy to be in the present moment another thing is whatever from the past or the future come with the package it's come with something it's not come alone so, so then maybe you get a little something little bit you know but it come with the huge you know package that sometimes you can't get out of it so once you recognize that you little by little start to settle down in the present moment even though your mind go past to the future you bring back you bring back that is a skill you develop remember that in day to day life whatever you do you keep your focus to your action if the mind go to the past or the future you bring back you bring back so that is another way called the sati awareness now you aware now you bring attention to the present moment so then that another way it called the tranquility state now you have the mind to settle down in the moment and you develop undisturbed mind but itself so now your mind is not in the past or the not in the future now you are in the present moment but itself it not allow you to to gain the liberation so before the buddha this is where all the enlightened masters stop and believed the present moment being in the present even in the today even today in the world there are a lot of they talk about being in the moment like a present moment but 2600 years ago according to the buddha's teaching is a present moment is a not a magic and it doesn't give you anything it doesn't give you the change it doesn't give you the liberation it only allow you to sustain so that's why you come to the present moment now from that moment you have to understand how this present moment happens so that is what called vipassana and that is what you you come to the body you come to the posture you come to the breathing and you observe what is this breathing how this happen oh the breathing inhalation exhalation beginning middle end there is a continuation and in that continuation this everything change moment by moment moment by moment and the inhalation exhalation happens it calm down the body mind and not only that when the inhalation exhalation happens and with that inhalation exhalation the your body mind follow it and the, the inhalation exhalation follow the body and mind so there is a deeper connection and not only that deeply you feel happy comfortable when the inhalation happens and deeply and complete that the deeply com- you feel kind of like a completion when the inhalation exhalation happen it's a moment by moment and not only that the thoughts arising with the inhalation exhalation you never know that and following the thought pattern the mind work inhalation exhalation so now you see it it is just not only just inhale now you go deep, deeper deeper into that 
and not only that then the 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 happiness and satisfaction both together come with the the inhalation exhalation and not only that and by the time little by little all the five hindrances start to release and depending from the inhalation exhalation you recognize it so once you know that that you recognize this inhalation exhalation just itself not the inhalation exhalation so the body the same you observe any posture sitting walking standing lying down you now go into and observe what is this sitting how this happen how the body react so like that when you observe each and every moment and you recognize there is something happen in you it's always arising existing and disappearing arising existing and disappearing this all the moments by moment is look like a current happening in you this everything vibrate moment by moment so once you see that you recognize even though surface level this is, listen this very carefully even though surface level in this conventional life in the ordinary level when you see standing sitting walking lying down the posture is different but underneath you experience the same thing there's no difference your heat motion liquidity and hardness the these four elements behave the same way once you see this what happened remember that the weaver the tailor who tailoring this life using the past and the future creating the desire is the last so now what happens in the vipassana level deeply you recognize underneath this all the postures all the activities you experience the same thing there's nothing once you recognize that that lust or the desire to start to release neutralize and when the lust release there is no resistance can be there so the lust is the one who holding when you like something there is something current format with the dislike so now once you don't there is no something you hold as like then there is no resistance so that is where there is nothing to let go you become free because you don't hold you be in the moment and recognizing this moment of experience in depth of this all this everything what happened is change anything on the surface level you do any action but underneath that any action you, that the same thing happens so in the moment you recognize that once you recognize that naturally you understand in the past that whatever happens even though surface level that whatever activity used to be different underneath it's the same and then whatever that you dreaming about the past and the future maybe it's a action you dreaming about but now you see beyond that action underneath your body experience the same thing there is no it's experience only the change with heat motion liquidity and hardness and once you have this understanding there is no any desire to to reflect on past there is no any desire to dream about the future there is no desire to being in the present moment this all disappear that is where your liberation happens so to get into that level once you develop the tranquility state that's mean having undisturbed mind or the samadhi 
from that point so the samadhi means you come to the present moment rather than depending on the past or the future from that point go into the the, the deeper from the moment of the place wherever you are you have to have very critical analytical understanding observe the present moment and that is where you get it's 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 not easy sometimes for some people to deep, think deeper understand deeper it's not easy because we have some you know laziness inside but vipassana means developing this critical analytical understanding go you go deeper 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 it can you cover it can every corner and recognize what is happening and then you know in the present moment whatever in the past in the future always happen the same thing and it's within you and within others happen the same thing in this life, in the previous lives, in the future lives happen the same thing. And that is where you have no desire to, to repeat anything. When the day comes for you to have that kind of mind, that is where you will experience the liberation. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So whatever you heard with this, and remember, little by little, you apply to your practice with you. So your right palm on your left hand, neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and a scan head to toes yourself and reflect on yourself saying so pateva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. When it happens through the sensation, recognize it. Do nothing extra. So if your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again and settle down with the present moment.
Bring your attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally, repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, Spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance, without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
श्री साधु साधु सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी ऑफर दिस प्रैक्टिस टू द ग्रेट क्वालिटीज ऑफ द बुद्ध धम्म एंड द संग and also by the power of this meritorious deed may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of nibbana may all your guardian angels and deities will receive this merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influence or so any ill effects ittavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya सबे भूतानुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया सबे सत्तानुमोदंतु सब संपत्ति सिद्धिया इमाय दम्मानुदम पटिपत्ति आ बुद्धं पूजेमि दम्मं पूजेमि संगं पूजेमि अत्ताय इमाय पटिपत्ति आ जाति जरा व्याधि मरणं हा परिबुंजिसामि इदम मे पुण्य कमंगा